Hello everyone. So today I have a beautiful multivariable calculus question. So maybe before you read the long statement, I can summarize it in the following pictures. So the question is, you are given a scalar function f and a vector function g. So at every x, you have a vector g of x, and also you will have a scalar value, a real number f of x, which satisfy these c1 conditions and also invertibility of dgz, zero. The claim is that on a neighborhood of zero, you can find a new vector field, your h of x, such that f, the scalar quantity, comes from dot producting g and h at every point of your neighborhood u. So how do we go about proving such a claim? So I'm going to do it in two steps, which in their own are not really easy. So suppose first that for every x in Rn, g of x, my vector field, is just identity, which is kind of a bold statement to make because you have just a c1 g, and this is by no means without loss of generality at all. But you will see how it's a, an important step in the proof. So we have the fundamental theorem of calculus. We know that for every x in Rn, f of x minus f of 0 is integral from 0 to 1 of the dot product of derivative along the line segment that joins 0 to x with the vector x minus 0, dt. So geometrically, all you do is just integrate along this line, which connects 0 to x. Then it's easy to see that you could first integrate this vector function, dt, component-wise, and only then dot product it with x. Notice how x does not depend on t at all. So then, if we let h of x to be just this quantity df tx dt, then for every x in Rn, f of x is h of x dot x, but x is our gx. So we have solved the, our problem in this case, except that, so exercise, I'm not going to show this, h from Rn into Rn is continuous. It's not C1 because you've taken one derivative of f, and f was only C1. So df is actually just continuous. Uh, to prove continuity of h is not actually um, too obvious. You have to use uniform continuity of h on compact neighborhoods. That's a beautiful exercise, so I leave it there. So in this case, I actually managed to do this equality on whole of our n, not even restrict to a neighborhood. So where does this restriction come from in the general case? Because in the general case, you need to use the inverse function theorem to, to, to turn your problem into the case when actually your vector field was just the identity vector. So to be precise, there exists in general case, there exists this open neighborhood of zero 
on which g is invertible, g itself, not just its derivative, and g inverse is c1. That's the very statement of the inverse function theorem. Let, let's consider and the scalar function f g inverse of y. So this is a C one function from Rn into R because G inverse is C1 um, and F is itself is C1. <clears throat> but we have to be careful because G inverse is not defined on all of Rn but rather on an open neighborhood. So, so this is a C1 function from an open neighborhood of zero. Remember g of zero is zero. Now apply the first case. <clears throat> first case of our proof to this function. So to f compose g inverse sitting in the role of the original f so to find a vector field which i want to show denote by h tilde rather than h so from some open neighborhood into rn continuous such that For every x in u, my function, my scalar function, which is f of g inverse of y, equals h tilde of y dot product with y. So the notation y is, of course, of superficial difference, um, but it helps visualize the change of variables from x to y via the map g and g inverse. So, but, but the existence of this h, h tilde continuous was what we proved in the first case. So this is a c1 function if og inverse is a c1 function. And as a result, we can find this h tilde solving this equation. So we show that if g was your vector field, this was possible. And this, this is sitting in the role of f, and g is the constant y, and we've shown this case. So, for every x in image of g inverse of u, f of x equals h tilde of gx dot product with gx. This comes from, so if this is 1, so 1 implies 2. And 2 is exactly what we wanted to show because h tilde composed with g is continuous. Because h tilde is continuous, and g was c1. Um, the way we get from 1 to 2 is, of course, for every x in the neighborhood, there's a unique y corresponding to it. So if you just re put y equal g of x, the unique y, which corresponds to that x, 
then it's exactly 2 if we replace y with g of x in equation 1. And this is what we wanted to prove for in the general case of the theorem. So that is a beautiful application of the inverse function theorem. And also it, it has this trick that can be applied in other instances. If you can show it for the identity function, and if you know that inverse function can be applied, then first show it for the identity function, and then turn the generic function into the identity function using the inverse function theorem. So I hope you like this question and also the tricks involved in showing it. If you have a solution to the exercise I put up there, please put it in the comments. Hope to see you.